Good evening, Oswego, and welcome to WTOP 10 Thursday Night News, your connection to Oswego and beyond. I'm Jovan Enriquez. And I'm Rachel Morrow. Today is Thursday, December 6th, and this is your new sports and weather, all before the first commercial break. Let's take a look at your top stories. 10 News starts now. A new University of Wisconsin study has confirmed that for healthy living, Oswego County is the worst area in New York State. The most alarming stats for researchers was Oswego County smoking, drinking, and obesity rates. 34% of adults are obese. The good news is that all of the health problems that result from these behaviors are preventable. 25-year-old Amber Simpson of Carthage, New York, was arrested early Tuesday morning for strangling her six-month-old niece to death after she became frustrated that the child wouldn't stop crying while she was trying to sleep. Simpson's boyfriend, Joseph Reap, was the first to notify authorities that something was wrong when he found the baby unresponsive, around 14 hours after the strangling occurred. Authorities report that since Simpson had no intention of killing the baby by choking her, she will only be charged with manslaughter instead of murder. And now a we'll check at our current conditions outside with meteorologist Jack Tiber. Jack, what's it looking like out there? Good evening, Javon and Ray. I'm meteorologist Jack Tiber. Good evening to you as well. If you're heading out the door tonight here at SUNY Oswego, you're definitely going to want the mittens and a, probably a warm jacket as well. The winds are starting to pick up. Uh, they're going to be going up into probably uh, between 10 and 20 miles an hour tonight, uh, but you can feel it as you're going out. Right now, current conditions outside. 32 degrees. It is freezing out here. No pun intended, but it actually really is 32, the freezing point of water. With the wind chill, though, it's actually feeling like 25. Now, the, the trend that we've been seeing the last couple of days or so, it's been kind of hot and cold, hot and cold. We're going into another warming trend. And as we take a look at the uh, radar right now, if you look off to your west, you'll be able to see some showers coming in from Michigan. Those are going to be arriving going into Friday evening. And along with it, it's going to be bringing us some warmer temperatures going into the latter half of the weekend. We'll talk about how much rain and how long that will stick around coming up in just a few minutes. For now, send it back inside. A Fulton man has been arrested for allegedly using his cell phone to record video of a woman exiting the shower at his home. Police were already investigating another petty crime involving 32-year-old Anthony Tara McGee Sr. back in September. Authorities learned that he recorded video of women without their consent. It is, it is alleged that he then, in an effort to destroy the evidence, chewed and swallowed the cell phone's media card. Terry McGee has been charged with unlawful surveillance, tampering with physical evidence, and menacing. Fulton police have charged 35-year-old Lee Johnson Jr. of Fulton with rape in the first degree, unlawful imprisonment, mena menacing, and harassment. Authorities say on July 30th, Johnson allegedly assaulted an unknown victim by punching her in the head and grabbing her throat. They also say he engaged in sexual intercourse against her will. The victim sustained minor injuries during the assault. Johnson is being held on $10,000 bail. With finals right around the corner, the library is the most populated spot on campus. Our very own Ian Dumbling is live with more. Hi, I'm Ian Dembling here for WTOP 10 News. I'm standing here outside of the campus center here at SUNY Oswego with Jordan Dietrich, who's a sophomore student here at SUNY Oswego. We're talking about the finals coming up this next week. It is going to be a crazy week coming up. Everyone's studying for finals. Jordan, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Now, I know that you probably have a lot of finals coming up. What is it like, this atmosphere here on campus? It's a crazy one. I remember from my freshman year, I had so many finals, I just can't even study for all of them. And now this semester, it's just, I only have one final, I have Physics 103 coming up, I have a presentation to do, and after that, pretty much all my classes are finished. Now, what can you tell to a freshman like me, uh, someone who definitely needs some help getting some, uh, working on some of their finals, what can you tell me for some support? Some uh, support I can night? tell you not to go out, for, for sure, not to go out to anything. Um, stay in, study. What I recommend to do was what I do, is study for a couple hours, study for maybe two to three, and then move around. Go get something to eat, go walk around, play a game, do whatever, that's what I did. It worked for me, and what it does help like stimulate yourself and helps you just like keep remembering stuff if you keep going back to it. So that's what helps for me. Excellent advice, Jordan. Now, are you a music listener when you study? Yes, I am. Big uh, I am as well. What type of music would you like prefer that people listen to when they study? Um, I listen to like the house, techno, rap, Lil Wayne Drake, all those kinds of guys, Avicii, 
whatever you whatever i like listening to anything maybe but a little bit country sounds like a good time you'll be bobbing <laughs> your head while you're doing all your work well thank good. you very much jordan no and we're going to take it back to you in the studio thanks ian the state singers performed quite the medley of songs on tuesday absolutely jovan we had the pleasure of seeing their great performance let's take a look this past Wednesday, Dr. Clay W. Price's state singers performed their winter concert at the Waterman Theatre. The singers performed melodies including, but not limited to, those of Bach, Brubeck, Prez, Matteo Fletcher the Elder, and Swangle. The concert also included a few songs of the jazz theme throughout the performance. It was a rather good turnout and among those in the audience was a couple that described their opinion of the performance. WTOP's Rachel Morrow interviewed the couple. I enjoyed it very much. It's wonderful to hear those the swingle singer pieces. They're, they're challenged with the different vocal parts and uh, different styles. Lots of different varieties. It will bring in a small jazz combo, also a lot of a cappella stuff. So very, very wide-ranging selections. Uh, very, very challenging things, especially for a group with a, a significant number of freshmen in it. Um, it's, a, it's a big deal. It's, it's a good thing. Quite an accomplishment, yes, indeed. The singers nailed a challenging performance in different melodies and even in different languages. The state singers performed pieces such as Sway, Ave Maria, Deck the Hall, and even 1970s Billy Joel hit Moving Out. The concert was sponsored in part by funds generously provided by the SUNY Oswego Student Association. For WTOP 10 News, I'm Jovan Enriquez. SUNY Oswego Cinema Studies students in the class Children's Literature and Film present their 8mm short films this Saturday, December 8th, inspired by children's classics fairy tales. It will be held in the Children's Room in the Oswego Public Library on 120 East 2nd Street from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. The event is free, and for more information, call 315-3652. Take a break from studying this Sunday to strap on your ice skates and skate with the Lakers hockey team. The team will be skating in the hockey arena from 1 until 3 p.m. There is a $3 fee for Oswego students and faculty with their ID, and rentals for a pair of skates are just $2. And now we'll see what's going on in the world of sports with Matthew Stone. Thanks, guys. In this upcoming weekend, five Oswego State athletic teams will be in action. The men's and women's ice hockey teams, men's and women's basketball, and wrestling will all be in action this weekend. Us here at WTOP will have coverage throughout the weekend for hockey and basketball. Some Laker teams to keep an eye on are the women's basketball team, who will face the University of Rochester on Saturday afternoon at 1 in Maxfield Gymnasium. Meanwhile, the men's ice hockey team returns to the Campus Center Ice Arena for the first time following their depressing 2-1 defeat to the Plattsburgh Cardinals on Whiteout Weekend. The second nationally ranked Lakers host number 9 Utica at 7 p.m. And coming up later, I'll have your full sports report, including Kobe Bryant's milestone, who might be in pinstripes next season, and what Super Bowl quarterback is coming back from an injury this Sunday. Now, back over to Javon and Rachel. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at your state news. And we'll update you with what's going on around the world. It's really out there now, but we have a little bit of a warm-up on the way and also some rain. I'll let you know how long it's going to stick around in two minutes. You're watching WTOP 10 News. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. 
But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is drunk driving. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. <laughs> Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. You're watching Oswego Sports. Update. Coming up on 10-12 on this Thursday evening, thanks for joining us. I'm meteorologist Jack Tiber. I got a, a, a chilly day that we had here in Oswego today, but that, there is going to be a change going into your weekend. We'll talk about that coming up in just a second. For now, outside right now, it will be cloudy tonight. A little bit breezy as well as you could see a little while ago when I was outside. The wind is starting to pick up. We'll see it around uh, 10 to 20 miles an hour down through the south. And 33 degrees looking like our temperature for tonight. Could feel a little bit cooler though with that wind chill. Right now, our radar throughout the uh, northeast, you can see much of New York State, we're mainly clear. Although off to our west, we do have some showers approaching, and those are all part of this much larger system, which is reaching all the way down from Michigan, down through Chicago, and into northern Missouri. This can be sticking with us as we go into your Friday, and uh, especially as you head into Friday night. Temperatures around the state at this hour, 22, our low point in Glens Falls, 40 down in New York City, 31 in Syracuse, and our warm spot right now in Buffalo, checking in at 41. Right now, uh, tomorrow for your Friday, though, we're talking about all that rain, as I mentioned, tomorrow afternoon. The reason why that's coming with uh, coming to us is because of this low-pressure system working its way up from the south. That's going to be bringing a lot of moisture and uh, some warmer temperatures, again, as you head into the latter half of the weekend. Why is this sticking around? Well, the jet stream is just north of us, and that's keeping that Arctic air away from us and making it possible for some of that warmer air to uh, impact us here in central New York. So as you head out tomorrow morning, I'm thinking it's going to be mainly cloudy in our area here in Oswego, most of central New York, but we're going to be keeping an eye on this system down here as it moves up around lunchtime, just after around 1 o'clock. I'm thinking a few scattered showers in Oswego. Most of that activity will be to our south in Binghamton and Ithaca, uh, the southern tier parts of New York State. And as you're heading out tomorrow evening around 7 o'clock, you can see widespread showers throughout much of the region. So you're probably going to want to bring an umbrella with you. The forecast for Friday, cloudy again, scattered showers arriving after 1 o'clock, I'm thinking, for the most part. High of 44 on Friday night, showers overnight. They will be ending as you head around, uh, get to around the 1 o'clock hour in the morning. But as you head into Saturday uh, and the rest of the weekend, that is not going to be the case. It is going to be a, a little bit rainy as you head into Saturday. And you can see right here again, there's that jet stream that I mentioned reaching all the way from northern Canada, way down into Texas. And again, keeping that Arctic air away from us just enough so we get that warm, moist air from the south. Take a look at our five-day forecast. I want to show you this right here. Look at that 50 degrees for your Monday. Mid 40s for the rest of uh, your weekend as you had Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, mid 40s. Can't rule out a possible rain snow mix for your Sunday. It'll probably just be like a, a little sleet, uh, most likely. But Monday reaching up to 50 with some rain showers, and Tuesday, complete change. Low or high of 35, as you can see right there. Very interesting. We've been seeing a lot of uh, you know flip-flopping weather the last couple of weeks, and it seems like that trend is going to be sticking with us for the now, for the foreseeable future. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Jack. Now we'll take a look at your state news. A suspect has been charged in the death of a man hit by a subway train in New York. 30-year-old Naeem Davis made his first appearance in court Wednesday. He's accused of pushing 58-year-old Kisuk Han on subway tracks Monday. Han was then struck by an A-train and killed. Prosecutors say Davis was indifferent to the victim's struggle and he was arraigned on a second-degree murder. 
actor Stephen Baldwin is facing charges for failing to file income taxes. The 46-year-old was arraigned in a New York, New York court on Thursday. Baldwin is accused of not filing his taxes for three years from 2008 to 2010. Authorities in New York State say the actor owes more than $350,000, including interest and penalties. Baldwin faces up to four years in prison if convicted. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie visited the White House today to ask for more help for his state to cover Superstorm Sandy relief efforts. The visit comes as U.S. Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood announced he's giving another $10 million to New Jersey to repair damage from the storm. So far, the state has received $20 million in emergency funds. The New York Times reported President Obama is expected to ask Congress for $50 billion to help rebuild states hit by Sandy. Washington State is issuing its first same-sex marriage licenses. The first couple to receive one in King County are Peter P.D. Peterson and Jane Abbott Lately of West Seattle. They've been a couple for 35 years now. They were flanked by family, friends, and media on the historic occasion. About 250 couples were lined up at the King County Courthouse at midnight to get their marriage licenses signed. The U.S. Secretary of State is meeting with the Russian Foreign Minister and the U.N. Envoy for Syria on the sidelines of a security conference in Dublin. They're debating how to revive the Syrian peace process and keep the regime from using chemical weapons. Syria has long insisted that if it had chemical weapons, it would never use them against its own people. Israel's Prime Minister has flown in freezing temperatures in Berlin for what could be a chilly meeting with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Benjamin Netanyahu says he's disappointed with the German leader for ignoring his demands to vote against a Palestinian status upgrade at the UN last week. Germany abstained from the vote. Angela Merkel also has a bone to pick with the German Chancellor over his plans to build more Jewish settlements in the West Bank. And when we come back, we will have Sarah Miller, our very own how-to guru. But first, here's your late-night menu. We have Fico MBA program helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. As we all know, the holidays are fast approaching. Once the stress of finals are finally over, a new stressor arises, finding money to buy gifts for family and friends. Today, I will tell you how to make a little cash so you can buy that perfect present. Take a look. In eight days, finals will be over and life will be good. All that will be left to do is pack up and go home. However, if you don't want any extra luggage, selling your books back while you're still here is a great idea. The College Bookstore, located in Hewitt Union, offers a textbook buyback program. It's quick and easy, and a great way to make some cash for the holidays. Program Director Susan Rabby shares more. We buy back all the books that you used for the semester and for any semesters previous. So even if you kept some around thinking you might use it and you might retake a class or something, we have those kicking around, we buy those back as well. 
selling your textbooks back to the college bookstore, you are not only helping yourself, but other students as well. If your textbook is needed next semester, they will buy it back for 50% of what you paid. They will then resell them to students next semester as used books. We buy back at half price the books that we are going to use for the coming semester. And that's determined by what the instructors have told us. What they've told you in class sometimes is a little different. They need to make sure they've contacted us and told us that they will be teaching and they will be using those books. You can even ask Santa to put next semester's books under the tree. Well, we have an online service and those orders get filled first, so probably that would be the best way to assure that you get the best selection of used books. For more information, go to the College Bookstore page on the Oswego website. Happy holidays and have a great break, everyone. You know, Rachel, I am so excited to be selling my astronomy book back. Good riddance. I can't imagine. <laughs> Must feel so good to have that little cash in your pocket. Oh, it does. My home, get some presents, maybe splurge a little bit. Maybe. <laughs> I can't wait. And I can't wait to kick my political science book to the curb. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. This year's Grammy nominees have Justin Bieber's manager, Fumi. Kara Lezuz has more in Hollywood Minute. Justin Bieber's manager says the Grammy board blew it. The 18-year-old pop star was not nominated for his album Believe or any of its singles. On Twitter, his manager, Scooter Braun, said Bieber deserved to be recognized. He said the hardest thing to do is to make a transition, and he says Bieber delivered. Actress Brittany Murphy died three years ago, but fans may finally get a chance to see her last film. According to the LA Times, Murphy finished shooting the independent thriller Something Wicked before her death. Post-production was delayed, but now the film's been completed. However, it does not yet have a distributor. Murphy, who starred in Eight Mile and Clueless, died at age 32 of pneumonia, iron deficiency, and multiple drug intoxication. For Hollywood Minute, I'm Carl Azuz. And now a full look at sports with Matthew Stone. Matthew? Thanks guys, and Kobe Bryant's ultimate place among basketball's greats may be up for a debate. But there's no denying Bryant's spot as one of the all-time best scorers after he became the youngest player in NBA history to reach 30,000 career points on Wednesday. Bryant surpassed Will Chamberlain's previous record of 35 years, 179 days. The Los Angeles Lakers stars scored 17 points in the first half against the Hornets. Bryant joins Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Karl Malone, and Michael Jordan as the only five players in NBA history to reach a 30,000-point plateau. Four of the five names on the 30,000-point list played for the Lakers at one point in their career. A fact not lost on Bryant, who has spent all 17 years of his career suiting up for the purple and gold. And after remaining quiet on the free agent front for the first few days of the winter meetings, the New York Yankees made some noise on the last day with a one-year $12 million offer to third baseman Kevin Euclid, sources said. More on the Yankees, the Yankees are one of the options for the 33-year-old free agent. The Cleveland Indians, in fact, the new home of Euclid's former manager in Boston, Terry Francona, are also interested, a source told ESPN.com. Euclid made $12.5 million last season when he hit 235 with 19 home runs and 60 RBIs for Boston and the Chicago White Sox, who acquired him in June. Euclid can provide as a stopgap until the Yankees get Alex Rodriguez sometime in June or July. Euclid is an above-average defensive player, winning a gold glove in 2007. And switching gears to the NFL, Steelers coach Mike Tomlin said earlier this week that quarterback Ben Roethlisberger would have an opportunity to prove he's healthy enough to start. Well, it just took Tomlin two practices to convince that Big Ben was healthy to play. Tomlin told the Steelers' official website Thursday that Roethlisberger will start Sunday against the San Diego Chargers. After going 1-2 and two in Roethlisberger's absence, Pittsburgh will certainly enjoy having their franchise QB under center this Sunday. Roethlisberger is recovering from a sprained right shoulder and a dislocated rib injury, and he shared practice times with Charlie Batch and looked impressive enough to impress Tomlin and the rest of the Steelers coaching staff. The Steelers and Chargers square off this Sunday at 1 at Heinz Field. That's it for sports. Now back over to the news desk. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the lighter side of news and your final forecast. Get your Smokey on. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, 
Step in and make a difference. Because nine out of ten wildfires can be prevented. Only you can prevent wildfires. Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Here's a dive into the lighter side of news. It's America like you've never seen it before. This is an image captured by NASA and National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration satellite. What you're looking at is the man-made glow of lights in the U.S. on a could free night. Scientists unveiled the unpre unprecedented new image at the American Geophysical Union meeting in San Francisco on Wednesday. December is National Fruitcake Month, a whole 31 days dedicated to the admiration of the nut and candied fruit culinary concoction. You can blame or credit the ancient Romans for the invention of the fruitcake. The first known recipe included pomegranate seeds, raisins, pine nuts, and pine nuts. Traditional fruitcakes were soaked in brandy to preserve them and prevent mold, though most mass-produced fruitcakes don't come with alcohol these days. About a dozen kids got a chance to go on a holiday shopping spree with NFL player Andre Johnson. The Houston Texans wide receiver was flanked by photographers and fans at Toys R Us. Then it was off to the races as the kids rushed to fill their carts with toys. The children made off without $19,000 in gifts. The shopping spree was made possible with the help of Pro Bowlers Foundation and Child Protective Services. Now let's take a final look at your forecast with meteorolo meteorologist Jack Teaver. Jack. Right, so as you head out the door tomorrow morning, it's going to be cloudy, again, making way for showers into the afternoon, probably after 1 o'clock, starting in the mid-30s and rising up to the lower 40s as uh, we head around to around the 3 o'clock hour tomorrow afternoon. Oh, and also don't forget to check us out. Follow us on Twitter at WTOP10 and also the hashtag of myself and all the other uh, meteorologists here at WTOP. Make sure you check that out. Even though we are going on break now, we're going to be tweeting for you as soon as we get back. So Great. I was hoping out. you guys would tweet over break to keep me updated on what the weather is going to be like. Hopefully when we come back, there will be snow on the ground. I'm hoping but so. But one can only wish. I want to go skiing. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I do too. Absolutely. I hope it's not another winter like last year where it was. we had an 80-degree day in February. I th I or March? I think it was something. It was something like that. It was something very bizarre, but you know, stranger thing to have happened. Yeah, you never yeah. know. <laughs> well, from all of us at WTOP, as you all know, this is the last newscast of this semester. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back February seventeenth for all of us at WTOP News. I'm Matthew Stone. I'm Jack Tiber. I'm Rachel Morrow. And I'm Jervon Enriquez. Have a happy holidays. <laughs>